Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking at the at focus state property wrapper so this is a new property wrapper available to us in iOS 15 that allows us to programmatically control which keyboards are active on the screen so in this video we'll be building on top of my last video where we talked about forms in SwiftUI so check that out and also as well we'll be adding a arrow and a done button above our keyboard so we can interact with our text field so let's get straight into it so before we get started it's also worth noting that these source files are actually on my github which you can actually find on my youtube channel page and this project now just has a contact screen where you can see all your contacts if you hit the plus button you can actually fill out information so i'm going to do this really quickly and then if we hit done you'll see that you now see that contact on the screen and you can now toggle through and see all the emergency contact information, which is pretty sweet. So one thing though that you can't see in the SwiftUI preview, and if we actually just run this on the simulator instead, so one thing you'll notice that if you run this on the simulator, you'll notice that when you actually tap on a text field, you actually have to manually tap on each text field to actually, you know, go between them, to go in between typing within them. So what we actually want to do is we want to add some buttons at the top here, which allows us to easily scroll through each text field on it without us having to tap on it. We can just manage it from the top of our keyboard here. So let's actually do this now. The first thing we need to do is actually add in a toolbar item group on top of our keyboard. So let's do that now. So in our create contacts view, within our toolbar modifier, just below our navigation bar leading, I'm just gonna do some typing and then we'll break it down. So what we actually have here is we now have a key toolbar item group where the placement will be on top of the keyboard like so. And we just got two buttons with an up and down arrow. So let's actually see what this looks like when we actually run this. So if I hit on the plus button, if I just tap on a text field, you'll now see that we now have these two buttons so we can actually scroll between our text fields. Now, as of right now, nothing's gonna happen because we actually need to add the logic in to do this. So in order to do this, what we need to do is we actually need to create a set of enums for each text field that we want to allow users to actually scroll through. So right now, if you look on our screen, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to add in an enum with cases for each field that our user could actually properly, for each field that our user could potentially input some text into. So let's do that now. So what we have here is an enum with all the cases that someone can input in, like I said before. But one thing to note that's pretty important is that this enum is actually been marked with the hashable protocol. And the reason why is because when we're actually working with focus state, it actually needs to use the hashable protocol to uniquely identify each case for each text field that we're gonna be working with or text editor. So now what we wanna do is actually use our focus state property wrapper within our create contact view. So let's scroll to the top and below our environment, we're just going to add this in and I'll break it down. Okay, cool. So what we're saying here is that we're using the focus state property wrapper and this is going to be our property that we use for handling and capturing which text field is currently active on the screen. So by default, we're just setting this to nil and we're also going to handle actually setting this to a default automatically whenever this appears on the screen. So when you're working with focus state, what you need to do is you actually need to tell Swift UI what text fields relate to what enum case that we created before. So the best way to think about it is that these enum cases are essentially unique identifiers for each input that is on your screen. And whenever the value of this focus input changes to the ID, SwiftUI will automatically make that text field active. So let's do that now. So let's go on to our first text field, which is our prefix one. And we're just going to give it the identifier and use our focus input to say this is the identifier and if it matches this, then I want you to become active. So we'll type this one out together and then I'll do the rest. So underneath here, if you just type out focused, the option that you want to use is the one here where it says equals because we want it to focus this text field when the focus state property that we have equals this ID. So we're now going to use our focus input and notice how we have to use a dollar sign because we're actually binding this to our 
text field. So in order to learn more about bindings, then check out my video bindings in Swift UI. And then what we're saying here is we want to do this whenever it equals dot prefix. Cool. So whenever this value equals prefix, this text field will now automatically become active on the screen for us. So now we need to apply this onto each one of our text fields. So I'm going to do this now. And then we want this one to be first name. We want this one to be last name. This one should be company. And then we've got phone number, email, and then finally, we have our notes, which is actually a text editor. Cool. So it's also worth noting as well that if you see that I actually haven't duplicated any of the identifiers for our input fields. So if you do do that, then you're kind of going about it the wrong way because you want each input to have its own unique identifier. What I want to do now is that when this actually shows up on the screen, I actually want this text field to automatically become the first responder. So I want this to be the active text field on the screen. So I want to do that. We're just going to add a on appear. So I'm going to collapse this toolbar for a second. And then we're just going to add in a on appear. And then within this on appear, I'm just going to say that I want the focus input to be equal to dot prefixed. Cool. So now if we run this, If we just tap on the plus button, you'll notice that actually it's not working. And the reason why is because at the time of this recording in Swift UI, for some reason, this doesn't work. Now, I know when I recorded this, WWDC is like on the 6th of June, so this may have been fixed, so you may not need to do this anymore, and this may just be valid. But in order to actually fix this, if it isn't fixed in WWDC coming up, then what you need to do is actually wrap this within a dispatch queue and add in some kind of delay. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So if we just run this, you should see now that our, after one second, our prefix field now becomes active for us automatically because we gave this text field, the identifier prefix, Swift UI knows to make this one active. Okay, cool. So now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to switch the toggle of the appearance of this to light mode and you can see that it's all good as well. So let's just try that again and we're all good, sweet. So now what we want to do is we now want to handle when you tap on this, we want to scroll through the items that are actually, you know, have identifiers within our form. So in order to do this, let's actually create two functions called next and previous. So if we just go here, I'm just going to collapse this to create some more space. Underneath here, let's just create a private extension with two functions. Now, right now with our enum, we actually don't have a way for us to easily access all of the cases unless we actually manually specified it in some kind of array, which is what I don't want to do. So with enums, what we're going to do is use the case iterable protocol and we're also going to use a int for an identifiable pause. We're also going to use an int as an identifier so that we can know what index each one of these cases are. So if I just add an int here, what this now does is prefix is now zero. First name is now one, last name, company, da da da. da. So what's actually going on here is we're basically saying, and we're literally matching up these cases to our form. So this is really important. So you can see here, prefix is the first one, first name is the second one, and last name is the third one. But in programming, like I said before, this will be zero, one, two. So you wanna make sure that the order of your fields here actually match the order of the fields on your Swift UI view when you're doing what I'm about to do now. So the next thing we need to do is actually use the case iterable protocol so that we're able to actually loop through all of the options within our fields on our form. So let's add this in now. But by us adding this, we don't actually need to create some kind of array of fields where we have to specify each one of these manually. This will just do it for us automatically. So now I'm going to update our next function and then break down what's going on.
what we've got here is a guide statement. And what we're saying here is that I want you to unwrap the focus input. And then I also want you to get the last index within our form field. So in this case, the last index is this emergency notes here. And if none of these two match, so we can't actually unwrap even one of these two, then this will actually exit early and you know stop execution. Then once we get these two, what we're going to do is actually get the minimum of our current input. So our current input, which is on the screen now, and then we're just going to add one. Now the reason why we're adding one is because we want to go on to the next input. So if the current input was zero, the next one would be one. So we're going to add one, and then we're going to get the last index here. And this is the last index within our enum field here. So right now our last index would actually be six because in programming, remember it starts from zero. So by us using this minimum function, what we're saying here is we're actually going to use the minimum between the two values. So this will actually prevent us from actually going over the number six. And then what we do is we then get the index from the minimum value and then we create a field enum case and then set this to our focus input so we're actually getting the raw value from the minimum that's been calculated and then accessing it from field so in this case let's say for example if the first one was one so if we if it looked like this so if this function actually evaluates like so where the first one here is one and the second one is six what will actually happen is that this function will return to us one because that is the minimum between one and six but if we had a situation where it was like this where this was seven and six what will actually happen is we'll actually return six to us because this is the minimum so this is just a safe way to prevent us from having to go over the index and stopping us from accessing an index that's not within the range so now let's actually do the opposite this time, but for our previous. So we're doing a similar thing here, except this time, rather than accessing the last case on our previous, we're now getting the first case because with previous, we're actually going backwards in our form. So we're now getting the first case and it's raw value within our field, which is in prefix. And then we're this time using the maximum. So we're not using minimum because we want to get the highest value out of the two so that we don't go below zero. So this time we're actually subtracting one. The current input this time was first name. To go back, we're actually going to take one away. So now this will become zero. And the first index here will always be zero as well. So just so you can visualize this, if we were to evaluate a function and if it was to look like this, where if it was like so, one and zero, what will actually happen now is this function max would actually return to us one because this is the higher value but if we actually get to the start of our form and it's zero zero then it's going to return zero but let's say if we're on our first prefix here and we are on negative one what this is actually going to return to us is zero because this is higher than negative one so this prevents us from going backwards and out of bounds on our form and then finally, we just use that index that we got from our max to then access the field and then set this to our focus input. So in order to see this in action, let's actually use these functions within our toolbar. So you just scroll up and we just expand our toolbar. So within our button, we're just going to call on the chevron up. We're going to call the previous function like so. And then we're going to call the next function like so. But what we actually could do is we actually could just make this a bit cleaner and actually write this in line. So let's do that instead now. So on our action here, we're going to say previous and then our labels is going to be our image. And I'm just going to copy this, replace the image and then replace the action with next. Cool. And we'll just delete that as well. So if you actually look and compare the two, this, in my opinion, this looks cleaner than with all these training closures. So let's just delete this old version. And now we have our buttons that allow us to actually scroll through our text fields. So let's actually test this out and see what happens. Cool. So now our prefix becomes active. And now if we hit down, you'll see that it actually goes through all of our text fields like so. So now we can just input in 
power fields and if I just go all the way up you'll see that I can't go past the index and it just allows me to go down so this all works great so something I actually do want to do as well and something that would be nice to have is to actually disable these buttons whenever we reach the start or whenever we reach the end of our form so let's do that now so in order to do that we're going to create two new computer properties within our extension where the next and previous is to check to see if someone has reached the end or if someone has reached the start so let's do that now cool so now we have our two computer properties here and we now are saying here that if the input is equal to the last case, then we've reached the end. And if the input is equal to the first case, then we've reached the start. So on our buttons, let's actually use a disabled modifier to disable them if the user has either reached the end or the start. So on our previous one, we're going to say disabled has reached start. And then on our next, we're going to say disabled has reached and so let's just run this and see what happens. And now we see it. And you can see here that now this button is actually disabled. So we're not actually able to actually go up anymore and tap it because we've now at the start. But if I actually tap on this, you'll see that this now becomes enabled. And if I hit up, it now becomes disabled. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll now see that this has now become disabled. And if we hit up, it now becomes re-enabled. So now we're able to easily, you know, move between our text fields in our SwiftUI app. So there is one more thing that I would like to do. And I would like to add a button in here to easily allow you to close this whole keyboard. So if you want to clear the active text field. So in order to do that, what we need to do is before our spacer, we need to create another button called done. And then we need to actually set our focus input to nil. So let's create a new function in our extension. And we'll call it dismiss keyboard. And then inside of here, we're just going to set the, in, the focus input to nil. And then what I'm actually going to do is I've got a lot of cells here when I actually don't need them. So I'm just going to remove these cells because they're actually not that necessary to be honest with you. So let's just remove these cells. It's a whole lot of cells. All right. Okay. Cool. So now we've removed those cells. So now we want to call this function whenever someone taps on our done button. So before our spacer here, we're going to create a button. And then we're going to call dismiss keyboard. And in our label, we're just going to have some text that just says done like so. So now let's run this and see what happens. So we show our form. We now have our done button. We can now scroll through our text fields. And if we hit done, it now dismisses our keyboard. And we're able to just view our form as well. So we're able to interact with it and we've got a fully working toolbar for our keyboard for interactions suite. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment in the comment section below with some feedback. And also as well, if you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.